Hello everybody! Whenever I want to make hydrogen balloons I have to produce the hydrogen myself and I usually do this by letting steel wool and sulfuric acid react. Now this obviously leaves me with a lot of iron sulfate solution that I don't have any uses for at all. Also I can't just simply pour this down the drain so I need to deal with this somehow. And the easiest way to deal with this is to turn it all into iron oxide, which is more useful because you can use it for stuff like thermite and it's also a lot safer because it isn't as easily soluble in water and it's easier to extract. So today I'm going to show you my process for turning huge amounts of iron sulfate into iron oxide. That way I don't have to throw all this away and I actually get something quite useful out of it. As you can see, however, the iron sulfate is still quite impure and that's because of the coal that's contained in the steel wool. So the first thing that we have to do is a hot filtration to remove all those insoluble impurities. These bottles still have a lot of crystals in them that are stuck because the opening is too small. So in order to get them out we can use hot water which actually dissolves them quite easily. Alright, here we have some hot water. It's discolored because it's also contaminated with iron but it obviously doesn't matter. The next step is to heat this until all these crystals down here are dissolved. It's also a great idea to stir this, otherwise you'll get anhydrous and sulfate like that underwater, which is quite interesting. Most of the iron sulfate has dissolved now. And now we can filter the solution through this piece of paper. Solution isn't actually very hot. It's warm to the touch only. This might take a while. After an hour of filtration this is how much I get. This is only about a liter of filtrate. Seeing that I still have like 10 liters to go, I think we are going to use vacuum filtration, which should be a lot faster. Vacuum filtration is set up. Now let's see if this works. This is looking great. Looks like this is working amazing. Now this was a lot faster but it's still going to take a while. My god, this looks absolutely amazing. You just have to love iron chemistry. Now we need to repeat this entire procedure with the other two bottles. All of the iron sulfate is now filtered and cleaned. These two might look like they're not really clean, but the reason the solution above there is so black is because a lot of the iron, a lot of the iron 2 plus has oxidized to iron 3 plus. And that's what's causing the dark color. This isn't actually an impurity that we have to worry about. Now we need a very big container where we can dissolve all these crystals in. And then we are going to use sodium hydroxide to precipitate the iron as iron hydroxide. This is the container that we're going to be using. 
it can hold about 50 liters or so. So let's start by pouring in everything that is already dissolved. Oops. Now we need to get all of these crystals to dissolve and we're going to do that by adding some hot water to these bottles. Alright, that was an entire workout to get all this in solution. Before we start, I want to quickly measure the pH of the solution. Now it should be highly acidic. Well, this pH paper is very old, but I guess that should be a pH lower than 1. Alright, let's see if it changes once we have added the sodium hydroxide. Definitely should. Okay, this is very hot and heavy, but I'll try my best. Okay, you can see the iron is starting to precipitate. Alright, and now we need to mix this very thoroughly, which is quite difficult with these huge amounts of stuff. <laughs> this looks so funny. Check this out, Jesus. It's very voluminous iron hydroxide precipitate. That's the color I was after. <laughs> I would need an industrial stirred tank reactor to stir this up properly. Can I stir it by moving the box? And nothing is really working properly. Well, at least something's happening. Alright, now I feel somewhat confident that this is decently mixed, so let's measure the pH again. Oh yeah, don't think that's... Oh yeah, I think we're good. pH about 8, so that's actually absolutely perfect. I hit it spot on. It's kind of unbelievable actually. That's great! I used exactly the right amount of sodium hydroxide, so stoichiometry works. Now we need to let this settle out a bit, then we drain off the excess water, and then we need to wait for all the rest of the water to evaporate, because this is way too voluminous for me to wash. I need to wait for this to dry out, so that I can wash it with a reasonable volume of water. I will just wash everything down with tap water. This is now about three days later and you can see the iron hydroxide has settled out about this much. So I'm just going to insert a plastic tube right here. And now we can just suck out the water using a syringe. I've now siphoned out as much water as possible. So now we need to boil down all of the remaining liquid that's still inside of the iron hydroxide. Boiling this down with a hot plate would be quite difficult and I would have to do it in several steps instead. I'm just going to put this in a warm place and place a fan up there like that. And with that I should be able to evaporate everything down in like 2 or 3 weeks. Here we are now with everything completely dried up. This is how much volume the iron oxide was taking up before it was dried. And now that it's dried you can see that it is a lot less. It took about 3 months to dry up. Here you can see everything nice and dusty now but this still contains a ton of sodium sulfate that we now need to wash out but washing it out should be a lot easier now that everything is dried up so we'll just add a lot of warm tap water it's bubbling nicely because of all the air in between obviously
Okay, this should now be nicely mixed up. And now we just need to wait until everything is settled out again. Everything has settled out nicely overnight. You can see that the volume of the iron oxide has shrunk quite a lot. Now we just need to siphon off the water. Everything is siphoned off now. Let's say most of the water, this is what it looks like from the top right now. And now let's try to filter everything off. So here we have a special big filter. And now let's see if we can somehow transfer everything in there. It also probably needs some vacuum. And this tube is way too wimpy for that. And now let's just try to transfer something into this funnel. So I will use this half liter beacon to scoop some of this stuff up. Mm, that looks amazing. <laughs> and then I will try to pour it onto this frit. Mm, I probably should... Yeah, that was... As you can see, this worked amazingly well. Probably should have started the vacuum first and made the entire paper wet. Mm. Start to vacuum. Now there is at least clear water coming out from the other side, which is great. Okay, now this is working really nicely, but it's just taking a very long time. So this will have to filter for at least three hours. I've got most of the iron oxide in there now, so let's leave this running for exactly one hour and see how it looks like then. For that I'll just start a timer and let's see what happens. Okay, here we are one hour later and as you can see not exactly a lot happened but within the next two or three hours we should be getting somewhere Well, I guess it would be a good idea to empty out the flask right now and refill You can see there's lots of sodium sulfate stuck to the bucket where it was filling in the liquid so it still needs a lot of washing too Now I'm just flushing down the little rest of iron oxide with some tap water. This is finally getting somewhere, but you can see there's already sodium sulfate crystallizing out on the top of this iron oxide, so we need to wash that down. So let's start by using the water that we used to flush out the big box. Oh, whoops, <laughs> dang it. This is the biggest royal mess ever. Stirring this up a little bit is of course also important so it gets washed properly. Okay, as you can see we are making progress. It's already dried up quite a bit, two hours later. And now we just need to wash this with a lot of hot tap water. So let's just add as much as I can. This turns out to be about one and a half liters. And now let's stir this up again to make sure the water will be used as efficiently as possible. So filtering the water the second time went a lot faster. Maybe the sodium sulfate was clogging up the filter and now let's just repeat this washing procedure for two more times and then it should be relatively pure iron oxide hydrate. And then we of course still have to dry it. Now for the last washing step one last time 1.5 liters of warm tap water and then this should be relatively clean. I've let the pump running now until there was no more water dripping out down below there. But this is still very wet so we need to still try this out. And for that we'll put it back into the box that we initially used. I've cleaned out this box just a little bit, not too much because it's going to get dirty again anyway. Now let's try to remove the iron oxide from the filter paper, which is apparently working really nicely. <laughs> uh, 
And now we just need to spread this out so it can dry relatively quickly. To break up these large lumps. There's a hair in my iron oxide. Looks like a cat hair. Stupid cat. Okay, now let's just put this in a warm and dry place. And then we need to heat it to dehydrate and then it's done. This is now about one week later. The iron oxide looks relatively dry. Now this is still iron oxide hydroxide and to get the real iron oxide, the Fe2O3, we need to heat this. So for that we'll use our trusted half liter beaker to fill some of this iron oxide hydroxide into this bag. Then we use our hands to crush this up into a powder as good as we can. Helping yourself with some mechanical tools like the CO2 cartridge for example is also a good idea. And once it's reasonably fine like that, we will put it on a hot plate that is set to maximum heat. And hope that this will turn it into iron, into the real iron oxide, Fe2O3. You can see that there's water vapor coming off now, which is a good sign. It's looking quite fascinating. And the color should also get more red now. It appears to be done now. This took about half an hour. Now let's try to transfer our product into the speaker. Now for the last batch, I think I figured it out by now. <coughs> so like this it works really amazing. We basically just have to lift up the iron oxide that's underneath and eventually it will all turn red. Now this needs to cool off and then everything needs to be cleaned. I've measured the yield now and filled everything into this bag and it turns out to be about 2.16 kilograms which is quite a lot. It's probably around 90% yield I would guess. So here you can see what the total yield looks like. It's this beautiful red powder. Now for the fun part let's try to make some thermite. So we first measure out some of our freshly made iron oxide. And then we add a stoichiometric quantity of aluminium powder or granules. This needs to be mixed up thoroughly. There we go, that should be good. So for the thermite, sadly the sound didn't record. But as you can see, after one failed attempt of lighting it with one sparkler, it worked perfectly fine lighting it with three sparklers. And it completely destroyed the iron my flask it was in, which was to be expected. Also, we've got a nice bead of iron metal formed. Okay, that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed watching and hopefully see you all next time. Bye bye.